And the words we use as leaders define our reality. Yeah. The words we use create our environment. When you refer to somebody as staff, it becomes people servant, leader servant. My job as leader is to serve. My job is to provide the tools, the insights, the vision, the values, and align the team. That's my job as leader. It is to support the people so they can serve my customers. And when we shift our language, a whole world opens up to us in how we connect people different, distinctly. Brad does it innately because he comes from a place of passion. Often we have to be intentional about what we're trying to create. Al alignment, when you have true alignment in an organisation, you feel unstoppable. I want to give you an analogy because um, true alignment, and we were talking about this before, is very, very difficult to achieve. Because leaders, when you, if you start in the startup and you've got three people, it's very easy to get in the huddle, and then you've got six, and then you've got 12, and then all of a sudden you've got 70 and you're getting a little bit out of control. And you're like, what happened? I just want them all to do their job and to follow the vision and to serve our customers. So you know how Jim Collins wrote the book, Good to Great, and it was all about getting the right people on the bus. But who was driving the bus? <laughs> Who's driving the bus? And everybody's else is looking out the window, having a lovely time. So um, my son became a rower, and for the first time I had anything to do with rowing. And he, ha he wanted to be in the first. Now he wanted to row in the first. And I think it was because the girls like the first. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, but to be in the first he had to train. And when I talk about train, I'm talking about 50 kilometres on a Saturday rowing. Of 11 weeks of school holidays, he was home for six days. The rest of the time, he was training. His hands were completely ripped to pieces and he couldn't feel them because he wanted to be in the first. You see, often in organisations, we compete, 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 compete to get in the boat. We're competing for resources. We're competing for budget. We, we set up... Um, uh, 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 organisational stress against each other, competing. But once you're in the boat, once the budget and plan is signed off, you're all together. When you're in a boat, there is no best on field, best on day. Guess what? You have to all row at exactly the same time, at exactly the same rhythm. And who is the leader? The leader is the cox who is setting the strategy for the river and is the only one who can see. But the eight oarsmen believe in their leader, follow direction, and all row to the same beat. So when I think about true alignment, you know, they're only schoolboys. And you know what was so funny? So Oscar calls me, gets on the phone, he goes, Mum, Mum, I wish we could row as good as the girls. <laughs> The girls, these girls, they're only school kids, and they were incredible, this sixth sense they have. There's a beautiful book called Boys in the Boat, which is about a group of lumberers in 1928 who ended up rowing in the Olympics in front of Hitler and what happened. But this feeling of absolute flow when you're truly aligned. Leaders set rhythm, leaders set strategy, leaders set values, and then people attach and align. So these boys ended up rowing in the nationals and they rowed two kilometres in six minutes and one second. It's apparently not particularly fast, but I think that is incredible. So what can you do in your business when you imagine what it's like to be in exact flow, exactly aligned? You are unstoppable. Yeah, I, th I think you know it's it's a great great story and a great way.